Hello guys, based on a special request, I've decided to make this video in which we're gonna solve together another example on the net short of a peptide chain at a certain pH. So in order to calculate the net charge of a peptide, we need to examine the side chains of the amino acids composing the peptide chain in order to determine if they hold an ionizable group. And what I mean by that is that groups that can lose or gain a hydrogen atom. And we should not forget the amino and the carboxyl function at the terminal ends of the peptide chain. The next step is to determine the ionization group of each functional group at the required pH. Let's take, for example, the terminal amino group. If we want to determine its ionization state and its charge at pH 4, first of all, we have to draw an axis. In the middle of it, we, we put the given pKa, which is equal to 8. When the pH is lower than the uh, pKa 8, we have the protonated form that predominate or that exist in the solution, which is NH3+. If the pH is higher than the pKa, the deprotonated form will predominate. So at pH 4, 4 is lower than 8. So the protonated form will predominate in the solution or it will exist in the solution. Now, in order to know the charge, we have, we have it marked here. So the charge is plus. Now we're ready to solve the following exercise. We need to calculate the charge of the following peptide at pH 6. As I've already said, the first step is to determine the ionizable groups. Even if you don't have the structure in front of you, as a biochemistry student, you must memorize the functional groups of the 20 amino acids. For that, you can refer to the link to the video I'm leaving you in the description. So first of all, I'm gonna start with the terminal ends in order to, not to forget them. We have the terminal carboxyl end on the right side and the terminal amino group or the alpha amino group on the right side. Cysteine have a thiol group or sulfhydryl group that can lose uh, a proton. Phenylalanine doesn't have an ionizable group. The aspartic acid have a carboxyl group that can lose a proton. Glycine doesn't have an ionizable group. Lysine have an epsilon NH2 that can gain a proton. And methionine doesn't have an ionizable group. So in total, in this peptide chain, we have five ionizable groups. The terminal NH2 and COH, the sulfide drive, the COH, and the epsilon and H2. Let's pretend you don't have the structure, but you know, of course, the functional groups of all amino acids and the ionizable ones among them. You can draw a table with the names of the amino acids composing the, composing the peptide chain, and you can write in the next row the ionizable groups of these amino acids. And don't forget to write the terminal carboxyl and amino ends in order not to forget to calculate their charge too. After that, you have to determine the ionization state of each group at pH 6. Let's start with the terminal NH2. You draw an axis. In the middle of it, you put the pKa, which is given, equal to 8. If the pH is lower than 8, then uh, the protonated form NH3 plus predominate. If it's higher, the deprotonated form NH2 predominate. At pH 6, lower than 8, NH3 plus predominate. Now, to determine the charge, you have to look at the sign here. We have a positive sign, so the charge is positive. For cysteine, we have the thiol ionizable group. Um, the pKa of thiol is 8.3. We put it in the middle of the axis. If the pH is lower than 8.3, so the protonated form SH predominate. If it's higher, the deprotonated form when it loses a proton predominate S minus. So at pH 6, lower than 8.3, H at SH form predominate. Uh, as you can see, there is no sign here, so the charge is zero. Phenylalanine has no ionizable group. Aspartic acid have a carboxyl function in its side chain. So to determine its ionization state, uh, we draw an axis. In the middle of it, we put the pKa, which is 4. If the pH is lower than uh, 4, we have the protonated form COH. If it's higher, we have the deprotonated form when it, lose a uh, when it loses a proton, COO minus. At pH 6, higher than 4, COO minus predominate. And the charge will be based on the sign here, which is negative. Glycine doesn't have an ionizable group. Lysine has an epsilon NH2 with a, uh, with a pKa equal to 10.5. Uh, 
Uh, at pH 6 lower than the pKa 10.5, we have the protonated form NH3 plus that predominate. NH3 plus bears a positive sign, so it's positively charged. Methionine doesn't have an ionizable group. We have finally the terminal or the alpha carboxyl function. Uh, the alpha carboxyl function has a pKa of uh, 3. At a pH 6 uh, higher than the pKa, COO minus predominate, which is negatively charged. So the net charge of this uh, peptide chain is equal to plus 1. Now I want you to calculate the net charge of a same polypeptide chain but at pH equal 12. So grab a scratch paper, copy the peptide chain in front of you and the pKa's, post the video and when you finish you can play it again to see the detailed answer. And here you go, the net charge will be equal to minus 3. Thank you for watching my video. I really hope you find it helpful. If you do, please don't forget to like and subscribe.